With Mr. Beast almost being the most subscribed YouTube channel in the world, it is no surprise that he has had many YouTubers trying to copy him throughout the years. But what happened to the most notorious ones? Well, with permanent bans, tax fraud and even murder being involved in these stories, we're going to find out who these 5 infamous Mr. Beast copycats were, and where they are today. Starting with a copycat that I'm sure most of you have never heard about, as this YouTuber stole content from Jimmy all the way back in 2015. Now during this time, Mr. Beast wasn't giving away millions of dollars through many charities and crazy challenges. No, he was actually a Call of Duty commentary channel that discussed various topics, and his newest upload back then titled The History of the COD Community on YouTube was a video that he was very proud of. But there is something that Mr. Beast is probably even more proud of, and that is that his meme got a custom Oprah GX mod. You see, Oprah GX is on a mission to get people to break up with boring browsers and have fun while doing it. So if you're a gamer or you actually want to enjoy browsing the internet, you need to get this. With GX mods, which you can find in the GX store, you can customize your browser any way you like with with tons of options, even in a Mr. Beast theme. And it includes colors, a dedicated wallpaper, background music, browser sounds and keyboard sounds. But that's not it, because in the GX corner you can also stay up to date with free games, the best deals, the newest releases and gaming news. I mean, I would have never known about the wireless Xbox gaming controller suddenly being less expensive now. And these are just a few of Opera GX's many features. So you want to switch over now right? Well with the quick import tool you can quickly import all your settings from your previous browser to Opera GX, even having compatibility with every Google Chrome extension. So why are you still waiting? Use my link down below to download Opera GX today. And thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. However, just like this segue, the idea and structure behind Jimmy's video was actually really well done, showcasing the talent that Mr. Beast already had for making YouTube videos. But there was one YouTuber that noticed the excellence of this video as well, and wanted to make it his own. Only 11 days after Jimmy's upload, YouTube channel The Smith Place posted a video titled A Complete History of the Call of Duty Zombies YouTube community. And with this video having the exact same format as that from Mr. Beast, Jimmy was furious. As a response, he decided to expose him, making a video in which he called out his blatant copying, showed that they both used intros with nostalgic clips, highlighted a similar format from before, and even caught the Smith plays red-handed by revealing that he commented on his video, which definitely meant that he watched it. However, you're probably wondering, why was this such a big deal for Mr. Beast at the time? Well, you must understand that he had little to no subscribers back then, a couple thousand at best, while the Smith plays had over over 500,000 subscribers. And this meant that even a small shout out would help Jimmy grow his channel, something that the Smith Place wasn't willing to do. Until he finally saw his response after multiple comments on his video started defending Mr. Beast. On July 16th, he went to Twitter to connect with Jimmy and was quick to apologize for his actions. Mr. Beast then finally calmed down from this incident, accepted this apology, and ultimately decided to take the response video down, also uploading a new video addressing the situation and finished it off with a very clear message for the haters. Okay, some of you guys were leaving comments on that video like, Beast, you're full of crap. He can make a video about that. It's not yours. You didn't copyright it. And you guys were like literally hating on me so hard. And then look, I mean, the guy with half a million subs even admitted that he copied me. So for all you guys who are leaving hate comments, go screw yourself, okay? Because I was right. Nowadays, there finally is credit to Jimmy's video in the description of the Smith Plays upload. But was this YouTuber really that bad of a copycat? I'm not too sure. However, what I do know is that our following Mr. Beast copycat was way worse. A YouTuber that Jimmy had beef with for years and that he called out several times for his scummy behavior. Of course, I'm talking about Morks. Morgan Hudson, also known as Morks, is a giant YouTuber from the UK with over 12 million subscribers that was once one of the most hated creators on the platform due to his content. However, despite his cringe content being the main focus of many commentary channels, it actually wasn't the reason for Mr. Beast's involvement with the young YouTuber, as Morks eventually got known as being one of the most notorious Mr. Beast copycats on the internet. It all started back in April of 2018, when Jimmy 
uploaded a video titled Can 1000 Rolls of Duct Tape Stop a Car? After which, only a few months later in August, Morks posted a similar video titled Can 1000 Layers of Duct Tape Stop a Car Hitting Me? The obvious similarities went unnoticed at first, but after more and more fans started recognizing it, the video eventually got to Mr. Beast himself, who decided to respond in a tweet that has since been deleted. Now, without knowing the content of this tweet, we can already guess that Jimmy wasn't happy, as Morks responded to this tweet stating that Mr. Beast also wasn't original himself. Jimmy wanted none of this drama and replied with one simple request. To be honest, all I want is just, you know, you know, when you get inspired, because it's clearly you're getting inspired by me, just switch it up a little bit more. Like, yeah, obviously I got inspired by other people. I wasn't the first to donate to Twitch streamers. Everyone gets inspiration. Just you put your own little twist on it, you know? Which resulted in the two gentlemen eventually resolving the situation. But their beef would prove to be far from over, as it was just the beginning. Morks continued taking inspiration from Mr. Beast throughout 2019, which resulted in Jimmy firing snarky remarks at him and quoting tweets calling out his behavior meaning that the two YouTubers then found themselves head to head again. Morks fired back one last time claiming that Mr. Beast actually copied him, another feud unfolded, and both went their own ways again after the argument, but this time without resolving anything. From this point onwards, Morgan's reputation was in the bin, being known as a cringe YouTuber, Mr. Beast clone, and even copycat of other content from YouTubers like Aventube, Eric, Brent Rivera, Ryan Trahan and Jesser, which got exposed by The Escher Show in September of 2022. He uploaded a few more long-form videos after this, but purely focused on shorts after his last video on Andrew Tate in January of 2023, which actually turned out pretty well for him, as this new content strategy revived his channel with it even seeing a peak of 127 million views in April. However, his views and consistency were quick to decline again, and in September, Morgan had an idea. He was going Going on a redemption arc. Yes, he stated in a tweet that his newest long form video would be the start of his redemption arc, and that from here on out he would finally make good videos only. Surprisingly, he was actually right, with this video being quite entertaining, but the performance of it was far from great, and it resulted in him ultimately doing shorts again and him eventually disappearing from the platform altogether in January. So, where is Morks now? Well, despite him having another charity match this year, you can mainly find him on TikTok, where he's making videos with Bald Martin, made a fake skit that went viral everywhere, and is now doing Golden Steak reviews. So you could definitely say that Morks is living his best life right now. However, speaking of notorious Mr. Beast copycats, there was one YouTuber that got even more hate than Morks for stealing the content of YouTube's most loved creator, a humongous channel with over 50 million subscribers the Belarusian YouTuber a4. Now in my first video about Mr. Beast copycats titled Every YouTuber Who Tried Copying Mr. Beast Worldwide, I discussed the fact that the Russian Mr. Beast first got exposed in a video by the Escher Show in February of 2021, in which he explained that Mr. Beast called out A4 for taking his thumbnails and simply just photoshopping his face on it, A4 then replying that it was just one picture and that his content was better than that from Jimmy anyways, in fact even 10,000 times better, and finished it all off by copying even more creators like Just Dustin and even replicating the merch of Mr. Beast. Yet, A4 continued building a success upon these immoral practices, as after copying Unspeakable, Eric, Preston and the Sideman, and even Sunny V2 making a video about him, nothing really changed for him. In fact, he got even more popular. Massive brands like Burger King started collaborating with him, resulting in his own meal at the restaurant chain in Russia. And he has a product line generating millions in sales called Lava Lava, selling chips, corn sticks and lemonade, with the chips even being under criticism for having the same formula and taste as a popular Russian chips brand called Moskovsky Kartoffel. But that's not even it, because despite his increasing popularity, there's also something special that happened in Vlad's personal life. He's becoming a father. Together with his girlfriend, he announced back in January of this year that he's having a daughter, and despite all of the controversy he has been in, I truly wish the best for him and his family. So, did this huge announcement mean that he's now a new 
man? A father that no longer copies videos? Well, although his frequency of copying Mr. Beast has declined, apart from this video, he's still copying various creators to this day, with Matthew Beam, the Stoke Twins, and many more still being victims of his blatant plagiarism today. But what if I told you that A4 is not even the worst copycat? Yes, this might shock you, but there's a Mr. Beast copycat that not only got exposed for ripping off content, but that also got outed for tax fraud and permanently banned from YouTube for immoral content involving minors. Yeah, A4 doesn't seem so bad now, does he? Now this story involved a YouTuber by the name of Pontus Rasmussen. And while I had never heard of this Swedish YouTuber before, it caught my attention when multiple comments mentioned that I should cover him in my next video. I searched him up and quickly found out that the channel had been permanently banned. But the complaints about him on the internet definitely showed his history of copying. However, who is Pontus? And why was he even banned? Well, a Swedish YouTuber by the name of Clue News made an incredible documentary on the whole situation. And thanks to my good friend Marin TM, who understands Swedish, we were able to find out what happened. So, be sure to check them both out. Pontus Rasmussen always wanted to be a pop star when he was younger, with Justin Bieber being his idol and his parents thinking he was a prodigy. However, when his career didn't turn out to be successful as a singer, he eventually turned to YouTube. And even though he slowly started to build an audience there, his gone content wasn't the best, as based upon his style of presenting, his facial mimicry, his editing style and even music selection, you could quickly tell that he was blatantly copying someone. Idag kommer jag att bo under vatten i 24 timmar. 24 timmar under vattnet. Hur ska du kunna göra det? Still haven't found out who he copies? Maybe this side-by-side -side comparison will help where he copies this YouTuber word for word. Yes, Pontus was basically the Swedish Morks, and he eventually became the fifth biggest YouTube channel in Sweden. But not without any controversy, because Clue News revealed that he covered an explicit song from Jeremiah, something that the parents of his very young audience weren't quite happy with, that he allegedly talked to his young fans about taking someone's virginity on Instagram, and that he posted a TikTok that he was born in 2004, while he was actually born in 1998. But that wasn't all, because in 2020, he also got accused of scamming kids in a live stream. This live stream involved both Pontus and a telephone number, which his audience could call to, but not for free of course, as you would have to pay one dollar per call. Then, when you would call this number, you'd hear a pre-recorded message that encouraged you to keep calling him, which would ultimately cost you even more money. And as a result, a random child called the phone number 1000 times, which meant that the mother of the child had to pay a bill of around one thousand dollars. And this, caused an absolutely enormous outrage around him. At this point, all Swedish creators wanted him off the platform, as he was one of the most hated YouTubers in the scene. And after Pontus made the standard YouTube apology video for this, nobody obviously wanted to believe him. According to Clue News, he even set up a fundraiser where he would donate one crown, the Swedish currency, to child cancer charities for every subscriber he gained. Yet, the charities apparently never received any of this money. And while Pontus was slowly digging his grave with all of these antics, justice was finally served after a while, as he ultimately got permanently banned from YouTube in March of 2023. Andrea Lewis Ackerman, the person for communications at Google Sweden, stated that they decided to shut down Rasmussen's channel for violating their child safety policy. And while nobody knows for certain what the initial cause for this was, it is speculated that this was due to a video where his viewers talked about their darkest and deepest secrets, including explicit stories with abuse. Use. People had hoped that he would redeem himself after this incident, but things only got worse, as he went over to Rumble without much success and even got accused of grooming. As he allegedly stated in an interview that he would never date a child, but that he could of course date a child later if they grew up. Pontus himself didn't understand the criticism and even said that he had an older audience on Instagram, but his haters thought otherwise, as an incident also occurred where someone showed up to his house and blew up his letterbox. Now all of this 
this is quite a story on its own, but it gets even worse, as Pontus didn't just have the entire side of the Swedish internet against him, but also the tax authorities. Skatteverket, the Swedish tax agency, revealed back in June of 2023 that Rasmussen failed to disclose an income of 2.4 million crowns, which translates to around $223,376, a sum of money that he earned between 2018 and 2021. Rasmussen had a perfect explanation for this. One of the reasons for his mistake was his young age. He added that he did not know enough about the tax rules and the laws, and that the fraud had been accidental. The second reason? Well, the hate comments and threats he had to deal with from viewers on a daily basis affected his mental health, resulting in him forgetting to do parts of the admin work of his company. It's up to you whether you believe this or not, but the Swedish tax agency definitely didn't. Pontus is still active on Snapchat and TikTok nowadays, while also pursuing his career in music again on Spotify. And finally, we have the worst Mr. Beast copy cat yet, as this YouTube channel ended up accidentally murdering a child during one of their videos. Now, the group behind this channel, called The Borderline, uploaded their first YouTube video in December of 2020, and almost immediately, you could tell that they would become a Mr. Beast clone. In this video, they provided food and other gifts to homeless people, which was very kind and charitable of them, but definitely a strategy mimicked from Mr. Beast as this exact type of video went completely viral for him back in 2017. Yet. Almost a year later, videos from the Borderline channel started looking more and more like those from Mr. Beast, with heavily inspired challenges, titles and thumbnails, and even editing styles, which truly reached its peak in 2023, when their thumbnail style was almost completely similar to that of Mr. Beast. Unsurprisingly, this wrecked in a ton of views for them, but at one point in June of 2023, you can see that the Borderline removed almost 100 million views from the channel, and the reason behind it will shock you. It all started when the YouTubers uploaded a video titled Spending 50 Hours in a Tesla Challenge back in August of 2022, in which the main actor of the channel, Matteo Di Pietro, could already be seen driving very unsafely. He kept looking back at the camera at night time, while his eyes should have been on the road. And while this was already a massive red flag, the video did pretty well. So they put up a challenge in their pinned comment. 100,000 likes on the video, and they would do the same challenge with a Lamborghini SUV. Almost a year went by, and in June of 2023, the video finally hit 100,000 likes. So, they were going to do it. They rented the SUV, posted a story on Instagram, flexed the value of the car on TikTok, and hit the road on the 14th of June. While reaching high speeds, they allegedly taunted other drivers for having less expensive cars. And while they were having the time of their life, everything would then quickly take a dark turn. Because upon reaching Casa Paloco, they reach a speed up to almost 150 kilometers per hour, suddenly see a white smart car in their way, try to press the brakes, but it's already too late. The heavy SUV crashes with 120 km per hour into the small smart car, with inside a 29-year-old woman with her 4-year-old daughter and 5-year-old son. Immediately after the crash, chaos breaks out, with the borderline members appearing to be unharmed, but the passengers of the other vehicle were in critical condition and quickly rushed to the hospital, where the mother's son eventually passed away. Both the mother and daughter physically recovered, but mentally they will probably be scarred for life and the incident was nothing short of traumatic. Shortly after the crash, one of the other actors from the channel that was seen in the TikTok about the car posted a statement on Instagram. The trauma I am experiencing is indescribable. I just want to say that I have never been behind the wheel and that I am very close to the victim's family. And Alessio D'Amato, regional counselor of Lazio, said that the social media accounts of those involved in the crash should be closed immediately. This ultimately didn't happen, as the YouTube channel is still up, and they posted a 40 second update video four days later, in which they said that they expressed their remorse in regards to the family of the five-year-old son, and that what happened left everyone marked with a deep wound. The group mentioned that the idea of the channel was to entertain a young audience, and that they will stop uploading content indefinitely when the message has been published. Later, an investigation into the driver Di Pietro began, as he was sentenced to house arrest on June 
24th. And in January of 2024, after being accused of aggravated vehicular homicide, he agreed to a sentence of 4 years and 4 months. However, he won't have to go to prison, as he will be able to take advantage of alternative measures, and the granting of his plea deal effectively resulted in a minor sentence. And while Di Pietro once again apologized and acknowledged his responsibility, lost his driver's license, and even expressed his desire to get involved in projects concerning road safety, the sentence was too low for some, with the president of the non-profit Road Accident Victims Association stating that all the aggravating circumstances were present and that the speed was four times higher than permitted in a 30 zone. Thus, justice eventually not being served for the family of the killed child. No matter what you think of the situation, a precious life was lost, and we can only hope that something as tragic as this will never happen again. But these weren't the only copycats. Click the video on the screen right now to watch every Mr. Beast copycat worldwide.